Welcome back everyone, I am Folygon, and in this video I will be sculpting Mulan on my iPad Pro while showing you my entire process from beginning to end. If you are new around here, click that subscribe button, and if you want to learn more about digital sculpting, check out gumroad.com slash Folygon for all of my brushes, courses, and more, including the Appeal Academy, my course slash mentorship program that takes you through every single step of my complete process of sculpting an appealing character. I've been digitally sculpting for many years now, and I've always wanted to break away from the shackles of my desktop computer so that I can sculpt on the go. Whether that be at a coffee shop or off in a nice park, it's something that I would love to be able to do. Unfortunately, 3D software often requires some pretty beefy computers. And I've never really found a tool that worked very well for mobile sculpting, other than maybe a traditional medium. In this video, I'm going to be doing some sculpting using an app called Nomad Sculpt here on my iPad Pro and I'll be trading off back and forth between ZBrush on my desktop computer to speed up some of the process. So let's get in here and show you my sculpting process from beginning to end, starting off with Blockout. Now I've only used this app one other time, so I am going to be a little slower than usual, but my actual workflow should be very similar. If you are interested in seeing my normal sculpting workflow on my giant Cintiq that I love oh so very much, Check the description for some links to my other 2D to 3D sculpting videos. Recently, I did a cool thief character that steals from the rich and gives to the poor with Chelsea Gracie, and before that, I did a badass boss girl with I'm a Wonder. Both of those were a ton of fun, and if you haven't seen either one, check out the links down below. If you are new to digital sculpting, Blockout is the initial stage of creating the basic parts and pieces of what you need for your character or whatever you may be sculpting. I like to think of it as anything that affects the silhouette, which is essentially the outline of your character. Your goal is to focus on the large shapes and don't get caught up in the details. Initially, I am starting off by blocking in the shape of the head. The back of the skull is essentially a sphere that's a little squashed on the sides. And the front portion of the face is a shelf attached to that, sticking out and down for the jaw. From here, I block in the major bony landmarks of the face, so anywhere that the bone comes close to the surface. The jawline, the eye cavity, and I also do the nose during this part as well, because it informs a lot of your proportions and it's connected to the brow, so it just naturally flows down from there. Next, I add in the neck and body. Very simple right now, and very slow. Everything I do here is about 10 times slower than if I were in ZBrush on my desktop in Cintiq. A lot of that is because I haven't used this app very much, but also just having a keyboard with a ton of hotkeys set up on it makes your process a lot faster. So I slowly block out the shapes, work on the proportions just a little, and then head back up to the face to continue my work. At this point, it looks nothing like the final character, and it's more of just blocking the actual parts so that I can adjust them later. Using the clay brush, I add some volume into the eye socket that I sculpted earlier, and use the pinch brush to better define a place for the eyeball. Unfortunately, the Nomad app crashed on my iPad at this point, and I lost a smidge of sculpting, but no worries, it's nothing we can't repeat. So I'll go through a lot of this repeat stuff pretty quickly here. Most of this is just getting back to where we were, but also along the way, it gives me an opportunity to make some nice changes. Mainly, I create a quick body, spending a little time working on that, and then the second main thing I do is adjust the main shapes in the head. I wanted to make the head a bit wider and rounder to better fit Mulan's face shape, so those changes were integrated now as I worked my way back to about the same level I was before the crash. I've changed the shape of the head to better represent where I wanted that to end up, the previous head was much too skinny and the overall proportions weren't really where I wanted. Now I'm liking the general direction a lot more and with some refinement, we'll be in a really nice place. I know that the eyes are looking pretty silly right now, but that's only because they're a placeholder as I will push in the geometry around the eye socket and place in a sphere to better represent the eyeball. Don't be afraid of what your sculpture looks like after only a few brush strokes. I always say that a painter doesn't make a few marks on a canvas and worry that it doesn't look like the finished piece, so neither should a sculptor worry about what things are looking like during those early stages. I actually think it's a lot of fun to see where things start, and sometimes how silly they look in the early process. It's pretty cool to watch it get built up and slowly start forming into that finished artwork. Now I have an actual eyeball in there, although we still have a ways to go. I'm liking the general shape of the face, but the facial features still need some defining before I can call them done. Also the nostrils, but those will come soon enough. I carve into the lips to mark out the general shape, and we'll be doing a similar technique compared to what I did with the eyes. So I'll be pushing in the geometry between the lips to create a cavity for the mouth. This will look pretty awkward at first, but it will feel much more natural in the final piece. You can see that awkwardness now as I have to keep the lips parted so that when I remesh the head, it doesn't merge those lips back together. Anything that's touching will kind of just fuse together. So it makes it look pretty silly for a while. 
a lot of refinement happening around the eyes, down to the nose, lots of cleanup to the eye socket to get that distinct eyelid fold, wrapping the brow down to the nose where we have nostrils now, lots of tweaking and cleanup down there as well. While I'm sculpting, you'll probably notice these weird graphical bugs. They're pretty annoying to work with, I'm not gonna lie, especially when you're trying to move geometry around with a move brush. It's essentially showing through to the other side of the model or showing the other pieces of geometry underneath, and it makes it very hard to see what you're trying to do. It happens even more around the central axis where things are mirrored, and hopefully that's something that gets fixed in the future. Adding some color now using what's called vertex color. It's also called polypaint in ZBrush, and it's a nice way to paint your 3D model without worrying about UVs or texture maps. So you can focus on creativity now, and then later on you can add those if need be. The painting tools are pretty basic here, which is fine, I don't need a lot to get by. The one thing that was pretty annoying here, however, was that the paint, no matter what I did, had a really sharp fall off between vertices. I tried lowering the opacity a lot, and that seemed to help, but I couldn't quite get the gentle blending effect that I wanted. For the hair, I start with a basic shape and start adding some secondary form by carving in and pushing out some large strands of hair. This helps give the hair more volume and helps to add some visual interest. It's really easy to overdo though, so be careful of that and make sure that you blend those forms together. Here's a little further on in that process so you can see what I was talking about with blending, where the forms are a little more refined with pinch and smooth brushes. I still need to blend the lower portion though to make it feel like the shape doesn't end awkwardly. This is a fundamental idea called stroke quality, and it's something that you've probably heard of, talked about in 2D, referred to as line weight. I talk more about this in my most recent start to finish sculpting video, where I collaborate with Chelsea Gracie. And if you haven't seen that yet, there's a link down below. Some finishing touches here, and then showing you guys the model in ZBrush before I do a render. So no changes were made between that model in Nomad and now in ZBrush, but you will notice that the lighting in ZBrush is quite a bit nicer. Throughout the sculpt, I was able to trade off between working on the go and working in my office on my standard Cintiq in ZBrush. I do like the idea of being able to trade back and forth between the two, but the process when going from my desktop to the iPad was pretty slow to import all the different meshes into Nomad. But for the most part, I enjoyed being able to jump back and forth. There are quite a few limitations when comparing between something like ZBrush and Nomad. Honestly, it's a little silly to do so, and it's not what this video is about but I wanted to mention it as Nomad is a fun little sculpting app, but it's simply missing a lot of the tools that you need for sculpting at a professional level. Specifically, the big one being remeshing tools. For those that don't know what that means or aren't digital sculptors, it's a must have. There are a lot of other tools and functions that I need to sculpt hyper clean shapes at the professional level that I do for client work, and ZBrush is hands down the best option for what I need. So I don't think I'm going to stop using ZBrush on my computer anytime soon, and I would love to include my iPad in my normal workflow, but the simple fact that I'm missing some of the tools that I need like I mentioned, that plus the flexibility I get from having my keyboard and desk set up, make for a much easier and quicker process versus on the go. So no, I don't think iPad sculpting is there quite yet, or at least I'm not convinced that I could use this professionally. I would really love to if I could, but for now, it'll just be something fun for little sketches. The good news is that there are a bunch of these new sculpting apps coming out recently, such as Sculptura, Forger, and now most recently Nomad. I've played around with all of these and each successive app pushes a little closer to where I want. So I'm definitely hopeful and I'm looking forward to seeing these tools improve. If you are new around here, click that subscribe button. And if you wanna learn more about digital sculpting, check out gumroad.com polygon, link down below for all of my courses, brushes, materials, and personal mentorship sessions, including the Appeal Academy, my course slash mentorship program that takes you through every single step of my complete process of sculpting an appealing character. Thanks all for watching. Hope you enjoyed the sculpt and I will see you in the next video.